You welcome to this edition of the Inside on Equinox Television. I am Babla Jonathan. The United States of America and the European Union are piling pressure on the Cameroon government over the deepening Anglophone crisis and the arrest and detention of the national president of the CRM political party, Professor Maurice Camto, other leaders of that party, and over 200 militants who have been detained in different incarceration centers in the nation's political capital. Yaoundé, in a recent statement, EU representative Federica Mogherini described the deepening crisis in the North and southwest regions as unacceptable, notably referring to the increasing number of casualties and the heavy impact on human life and, of course, the socio-economic state of the two Anglophone regions of the country. And in the same vein, U.S. Under Secretary of State for African Affairs, Thibault Nagy, urged the Cameroon government to be more serious in the management of the socio-political and security crisis in the northwest and southwest regions of the country, indicating that the measures taken so far by the Cameroon government are insufficient to solve the crisis. Both officials speaking on behalf of the United States and the European Union urged the BIA governments to release Professor Maurice Canto and other supporters of the CRM political party. In the meantime, the Nigerian Federal High Court has called on the government of Nigeria to bring back Sisiku Ayuktabe, the other nine uh, leaders of the Anglophone struggle to Nigeria. But will this yield any fruits? And of course, we're going to be looking at this and the trial that has continued at the Yaoundé military court. Stay with us and meet our guest in some few seconds. Our guest in this edition of the program is a senior legal mind, the defense, the lead defense counsel of Sisiku Ayukta Bay and the other nine Anglophone leaders being detained in Cameroon's political capital Yaoundé in connection to the deepening Anglophone crisis. Barista Food, I'm sorry, you're welcome. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, sir. Were you surprised when you heard that uh, barrister Michel Ndoki of the CRM political party was transferred to the Kondengi maximum security prison in Yaoundé? I was not surprised. Uh, she met us when we were still in court in the military tribunal. She came to the military tribunal. I knew that they were going to charge her and, and, and remand her to prison because that is the modus operandi that this regime is using to, uh, to, 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 to fight its political opponents and uh, they've transformed the military court into a political court. So I wasn't surprised when they brought her and she's now, she's now in the principal prison, the same prison where uh, my clients, Ayuktabe and nine others, and our clients, Ayuktabe and nine others, and uh, the most eminent professor, uh, Maurice Kamto, they're all in that principal prison. So. Uh, that prison is looking like a political prison now. Okay. As a legal mind, uh, what's your analysis of uh, the uh, legal um, backings that have been advanced by government to arrest and detain these political leaders, Professor Maurice Camto uh, and the others? There's no legal backing. You know, the laws of 1990 uh, they provide for public manifestation, public meetings, or private. Want to we want to hold a manifestation? You you declare, and when you declare, uh, uh, the you declare to the to the sous prefect, not to the prefect, I must add. Uh, and uh, the, the divisional the, officer, the divisional officer now will now issue uh, if he if he if he thinks that the itinerary that you want to match is not conducive because of one problem or other, he can, he has a right to change the itinerary. But, before, but he has no right systematically to refuse uh, claiming that it's, it will engender public, public peace. Because that's, what they, that's the language they use to refuse manifestation for the opposition parties. But when it comes to the, to, the, to the ruling party, oh no, everybody marches, everybody dances in the street, everybody does what it does. So, uh, there is no legal backing to have to have s transformed a violation, which they call a violation of public manifestations, to terrorism charges. 
and, and transfer the case to the military tribunal, it's a, it's a, it's a, as we saw it coming when they passed the law, the law on, on suppression of terrorism in 2014. Uh, that law, Mr. Beer, was meant for Mr. Beer to cramp on all political opponents in the country, and uh, that is what is happening right now. So they have transformed that now to when you when you march now, they will now frame up all those charges and say that you 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 you, you are you are rebelling against the state. You have you are fighting against the state. You have called for rebellion. You have called for this and transform it into terrorism and then charge you for terrorism and send you to the military court. But in response That's what's to in response to international pressure. Uh, the spokesperson of the Cameroon government, the Minister of Communication, uh, René Manuel Sade, said these political leaders were arrested within the ambit of the law. If they were arrested within the ambit of the law, they should apply the 1990 laws. But that's not what the law they're applying. They're, they are now pushing it now to apply the 2014 terrorism law on people who were marching peacefully. They were even shot at by the police. So it's neither here nor there. I don't see how you can transform a, 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 a public manifestation, which is a right enshrined in the Constitution, to, 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 to terrorism, to terrorism uh, violations of terrorism, ter terrorism law of 2014. That's why everybody now, if you are caught just holding a meeting, they will transform it now into terrorism and send you to to uh, to uh, to, uh, to the military court and from there to Kondenge and they try you under the military court, which has a maximum penalty of death. I I, I don't understand it. Even though um, it's been repeat, repeatedly said by the officials of the CRM political party and other persons, civil society leaders and so on, that there was no destruction in the national territory as far as the strike action of the 26th of January in some major towns of the country is concerned, but there was some destruction in some embassies in Paris and in Germany, and these destructions have been attributed to Maurice Canto uh, and others, and of course the CRA political party has I don't know whether these people take Cameroonians for fools. Something happened in Cameroon, the March of the 26th, there was no destruction, there was nothing, it was peaceful march, and whatever took place in France or wherever, it is how do you stay in Cameroon and commit a crime in France to the extent that you destroy an embassy? The people who destroyed an embassy in France and, and maybe what is it, Germany. Germany had nothing to do with the, 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 the Renaissance Party here in Cameroon. They, 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 I hear, I, I watch the news too. It, it was, uh, they, they, they call them anti. Anti Sardina Brigade. Uh, the, uh, the Brigade Anti Sardina. How is that connected to a political party in Cameroon? I, I don't understand it. You sit in Cameroon, okay, the law, the, the crime was committed where? In France. France is a country, it has its own laws, it, it, it's a sovereign nation. They have a right to arrest and charge anybody who misbehaves in France. Well, how, is that, how is that connected to Cameroon? How is that connected to a manifestation, a public manifestation in Cameroon? No, they see, they, they, they see. It's just to give a dog a bad name to hang it. Hmm. Now, there is, uh, in one of the charges leveled mm -hmm. against Professor Maurice Camto, there is hostilities, hostility against the fatherland. What is it, hostilities mm -hmm. against the fatherland? Is it that is what, that, that is coined exactly from the terrorism law. There is nothing like that in the 1990 laws and the laws on, on, on uh, public expression, public manifestation, uh, which is even enshrined in the Constitution. It's your, it's your basic right, except that it is controlled by the 1990 laws and it is under the, the control and uh, supervision of the, of the divisional officers in the whole country. So I don't see how... That charge that you just read is connected to public manifestations. I don't see it. Some argue that, um, like I listened to the first vice president of the CRA political party, yes. Mota. He said, Mr. Mota. He, he said hostility against 
the fatherland means uh, uh, Nigeria or another nation attacks your country. Nigeria, for example, Chad, for example, or the Central African Republic attacks Cameroon, and you, a Cameroonian, you take side with the foreigners. Uh, that, that is exactly what it is. But the, the drafters of that 2014 law on terrorism never thought of that. You had, how can a Cameroonian acting within his constitutional rights be hostile to his country? How is that? How is that possible? You can only be hostile to your country if you take sides with a foreign nation against your country. But if you are, as an individual or a group of individuals, marching down the streets of your country, how is that? How are you hostile to your country? What about actions that um, uh, that threatened, uh, for example, that threatened public peace, uh, public uh, the stability of the nation? The let me tell you the way the way so, the nineteen ninety law. Because these are some of the issues that are being highlighted to justify uh, those charges against. Let me tell you. Let me tell you the nineteen ninety law is clear. Public manifestations are regulated by the divisional officers. He can even call police to guard the people who are marching so that there will be no destruction. And effectively, on the on the twenty sixth of January, in the whole country, where they arrested all these people and brought to Yaoundé. There was no destruction anywhere. In fact, a violation came from the forces of law and order, the police. You are not supposed to, during public manifestation, use firearm. But that's what they did. They used firearm and shot on some of these militants and wounded them. These people never destroyed anything. How is that, how is that a violation? All these things, they are doing it to coin it under the 2014 law on suppression of terrorism. That is that was that was the legislative intent now we are knowing of that law to cram down on all political opponents in Cameroon. And that is why probably the CRM political party is accusing the DBR regime of uh, putting in place a criminal plan. That's how the uh, vice president of the party puts it, a criminal plan to destroy the CRM political party. Exactly. And they are doing it because uh, uh, from my evaluation as a political observer, the, 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 CRA, the CRAM political party is rising. It's rising and rising every day. So the CPDM is now afraid that they may overtake and enter the National Assembly and overtake the, the whole the political uh, landscape in Cameroon uh, to the detriment of the CPDM. That is why they want to clamp down on them. And to do it, they're using the 2014 terrorism law to, to, to suppress people who were exercising their constitutional right. Now, there have been calls within the national territory from politicians, from civil society leaders, uh, calling on the president of the republic and, of course, the Cameroon government to liberate Professor Maurice Kamto and the others. And now the call is coming from outside, from superpowers, the United States of America, through the uh, Under Secretary in charge of African Affairs, and of course the European Union through its representative, who are calling for the liberation of Professor Maurice Camto and the others. Do you think this calls can prosper? Listen, as a call for the for the for for for, for negotiations, as a result of the Anglophone uh, war, the war that Mr. Bia declared on Anglophones, the calls came from all over the world. Has he respected any? Well, let's wait and see. The Under Secretary for African Affairs is coming here in the 17th. Let's see what does see what what it will produce. But eh, 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 I hope we are not making it sound like this uh, Professor Cantos uh, matter is more serious than the war that has been fought in the Northwest and Southwest. The war declared on us by Mr. Bia. I hope not. Right now, we're going to take the press review in for me, Armstrong Sander. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the situation in the northwest and southwest regions of the country. Eden newspaper opened the week with the Nigeria court's order for the return of Amazonian leaders. The Post reported that Abuja court verdict put Cameroon and Nigeria on a legal and diplomatic tight spot. The paper went further to report a massacre in Takija, 
and Wenti in the northwest region of Cameroon, Logidion, Sisiko and Co. to be compensated and returned to Nigeria. The star, violation of human rights, judges order Nigeria government to pay Sisiko Ayuktabi and nine others 5 million naira each. The same paper said beer prices go up after years of debate between government and brewery industries in Cameroon. The media said Amazonian separatists welcome increase in beer prices by brasseries. The advocate said Amazonian leaders go to court March 7, despite Nigeria High Court's ruling. The Garden Post reported that Sisiko Ayuktabe and co. have written a tear-provoking letter from prison. The same story appeared on The Voice, which said Amazonian leaders issue manifesto from jail. The Voice further talked about massacre, targeted killings, gendarmes parade naked amber boys, amber avengers hit back as some of the features of the war in the northwest and southwest regions. The Horizon said Tumi's AGC is in a limbo and another group has been formed to arrest the Anglophone crisis. Logidion Echo Trains carried a story on war and environment, describing Northwest and Southwest as an ecological time bomb. The Sun newspaper explained why Sase College is shutting down. The Garden Post, Anglophone crisis, Camto detention, fireworks feared as Trump's envoy, expected in Yaoundi. In another issue, it cited Trump's envoy, saying Bia's long rule is major cause of Cameroon's troubles. Thanks for me, I'm Strong Sander for the press review. Barrister Fru Johnson, uh, we're going to start with um, the situation of your clients. I'm talking about Sisiko Ayutabe and the other nine Anglophone leaders Correct. who have been detained in um, Yaoundé. They have appeared in the military court for quite a number of times now and until now, what has moved? Has anything changed? Has anything moved an inch? Nothing has moved an inch because we we have put together a defense, a solid defense of legal minds, both in the northwest and southwest, some from Douala, some from Yaoundé. And uh, we have been following the procedure legally. I want to inform you that up to now they have not been arraigned before that court. Because they, don't, they have no reason to be tried in this country. Because they are refugees and asylum seekers in Nigeria. So we have kept the court at bay up to now. All the court appearances, the judge has been looking for, looking for all loopholes to arraign them. It will not happen in this court as long as we are in that court. Because they, they, how do you live? this country, go and connive with a foreign country, captured refugees that are, uh, that are in, or legally in that country and bring them here without any due process and you are trying them in a military court to kill them. Even How though, is that possible? Even though government told us that they were, uh, there was extradition. Uh, I don't know what they call extradition. Nigeria does not have a extradition treaty with Cameroon. There was no due process in Nigeria. If, if, you, if you take a good look at the judgment coming from the Federal High Court in Abuja, you will see that these people's fundamental rights were violated. We'll be coming to that. Yes, but I want to tell you that from the day this matter started here in the military tribunal, we have been, we have series of uh, 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 objections, liminalities, that is preliminary objections, to race. We have just finished one. And that is on the nationality issue. We will go on to the, 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 the competence, the very competence of this court to try them. And on the nationality issue, the court ruled that the Cameroonians, that they're going to be tried as Cameroonians. That, is what, the, that, is, what we, that is what we have gone and appealed for. Even though this court claimed that it was not a ruling. We take it for a ruling. The court, the military court started saying, oh, say, I'm mansion. I don't know what it is, what is mansion in, a, in even in civil law. I've been practicing civil law here for more than 30 years. What is mansion? You receive evidence from both sides. You go and come back and issue a ruling. And you, call, and you say it's not a ruling. It's a mansion. What does that mean? 
So we take it for a ruling, and we have a file and appealed in the in the in the in the appeals court in the center. No, how can we understand the fact that in the course of a case, the judge who is handling that case is transferred to another town, to to another uh, a court. Notably, I'm talking about the judge of the young the military court was transferred to, to the Boya. The Boya military court. Yes. Let me tell you, if the intent is to frustrate us, they have. They have shot. They have shot. They, they, they have shot the wrong. They, they, have, they, have, they have. They are shooting the wrong way, because we are ready to go as long as it takes. Our clients are ready to go as long as it takes. But that's it. Is, it, said is that. it legally correct? Uh, if you move, if you transfer a judge from one court to the other, when that the judge sitting on the matter and that matter has not been taken to the end, the new judge coming will have to start the novel. That is, we have to start all over. I want to inform you that we are going to start all over, but we are not going to start. Listen to me. We are not going to start all over until, until the court of appeal has heard that appeal that we filed. We are going to make sure that the court of appeal hears that appeal that we filed. There are two issues that we filed. We filed an appeal on that is ruling, and we also filed a recusal to recuse that bench because that judge that has not been transferred was openly biased. And you know why? What, I'll give you just one of the reasons. He's a victim of the Anglophone crisis. His car was burnt in Boya when he was military judge in Boya. So how do you expect a man like that naturally to be fair? So we have, among other issues, among other things that he has done, like the pre preventing us from filing an appeal and other things that made us to think that he's, he was biased, we have filed a recusal to remove him and his and his panel from this case. Fortunately for him, in the interim, he has been transferred. But his panel is still there. We will make sure that that panel does not sit again. A new panel must be constituted. And the next hearing is coming up on the 29th on the 29th of March. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm suspecting that by 29th of March, we will not have finished the court of appeal. So it will be another another adjournment. All right. And concerning the nationality issue. Um, the Nigerian Federal High Court issued a ruling calling on the government of that country, calling on President Buhari and his government to bring back Sisiku Ayutabe and the other nine Correct. to Nigeria. Correct. And why, pay them damages. Why is the court asking, uh, requesting that they should be brought back to Nigeria and pay damages? Because they, are, they were legally in Nigeria as refugees and asylum seekers. And they are protected under an international convention that was uh, promulgated in 1951 and ratified by both Nigeria and Cameroon. Cameroon ratified that con international convention to pro the protection of refugees in, in, in 1961. So Cameroon is bound by that, that, that convention to respect the, the, uh, the, uh, 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 the, the refugees in Nigeria. Cameroon and Nigeria are bound by that. So when the soldiers in Nigeria connive with soldiers in Cameroon to kidnap those people. I call it kidnapping because there was no due process, there was nothing, there was no deportation act, there was nothing. In the Nigeria, which is an English system, the common law system, you must go through the due process of law. That what does that mean? You must be arrested by with a warrant, you must be tried, an addition taken to deport you, and under that convention. If you are tried for a crime committed in Nigeria, you are, the court must ask you where you want to go because the law, that international convention does not allow you to be sent back to the country from where you are running from. That is, those those Cameroonians, they, 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 they were refugees. Yes, they were refugees. The they host country is they, not, you, it's not allowed to send you back to, to your own country. To the own country where you are running from. They will ask you to choose a third country, to choose another country. But are there some... Uh, 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 that, oh, oh, that, that, is, if, if, that is if you are a security threat. If you are not a security threat, you barely go to prison like any other person. Come out and continue to, to, to become a refugee. When the interests of the states involved, like the case we are talking about, Nigeria and Cameroon, are uh, concerned, are, are there some uh, conditions that could um, allow the two states, the two governments, to agree on one thing or No, sir. The two governments cannot agree to violate the international convention. 
There is no such thing like two countries agreeing to violate a national, a, a international convention that was promulgated after World War II to protect refugees and asylum seekers around the world. It's not only Cameroon. It's not only Nigeria. It's all over the world. You cannot agree to violate that that constitution. If you read the if you read the judgment coming from Abuja, it cites that convention, it cites the the human rights, uh, uh, the, 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 the 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 law on human rights and people's rights of Africa, as promulgated by the African Union, it cites uh, the fundamental rights of of people living in Nigeria, which is enshrined in the constitution. It's a violation of Nigerian constitution. It's a violation of international law, a violation of human rights law. Is the Federal Republic of Nigeria under pressure for having violated the, this law? I would suspect that they are under pressure. Look, that judgment has just been issued. It has been certified. Now, with regards to the way uh, the government of the Republic of Cameroon has been handling this case, uh, do you think that is uh, that uh, ruling of the Federal High Court of Nigeria, is it going to produce any fruits? Is no, of course, of course. Of course, it must produce fruits. Let me tell you, the Attorney General of Nigeria, of the Federation of Nigeria, has been served with that judgment. And he, is, he has 14 days to decide whether to appeal or to execute. And from my evaluation, the issues in the trial court, that is the, the Federal High Court, were such that there is no grounds for the, for the, for the Federation for the Attorney General to appeal. But let's go and see what he does. If he does not appeal, all he will do is that they will pay these people their, their, their damages. The 10 leaders will get 5 million naira each. The 47, because it's not only the 10 leaders, eh? it's a total of 57 people. 47 plus 10, that's 57. The 10 who, leaders who, 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 The 10 leaders and the other people who were taken from Taraba State. They are all in Kondengue State. Five million naira each and the others. The, 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 other, the other ones, 200,000 naira each. 200,000 naira each. The, the government, it's not like here. The government will pay. If it doesn't pay, the lawyer will garnish government accounts and force it to pay. Nigeria will want to ask Cameroon to send back those people that were taken from Nigerian soil, from Abuja, and flown into Cameroon, and they are now being detained in maximum security prison, and they are being tried in the, in the being court martialed in the military court in Cameroon, Nigeria will be asking, asking Cameroon to send them back. And the question diplomatically, is, will, will Cameroon diplom yield to? The I don't. I cannot answer that question. What what, but what, what, what is what will compel Cameroon to yield to that? We, Cameroon, the world has become a global village. If Cameroon wants to step out of the global village, it can do so. But Nigeria has a duty now to clean its image. Because this matter has dated the image of the Nigerian government. Nigeria is one of the countries, out of two countries in Africa, that are gunning for the permanent member of the Security Council. Because the Security Council has decided that they will increase the permanent members from five to seven. One from Africa, one from South America. And in Africa, two countries are gunning for it, South Africa and Nigeria. And if Nigeria does not take this opportunity to clean its image, by asking Cameroon to simply comply to the to 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 to, to the to the to the Federal High Court ruling that has compelled Nigeria to bring those people back, they will they will they will have to have a diplomatic problem, and naturally, Nigeria will call on the United Nations. In international law will uh, take preeminence over whatsoever would be decided. Yes, it will not be international in the international uh, diplomatic problem between Nigeria and Cameroon. Well, we are not yet there. We are waiting to see what the Attorney General will do. But uh, that is what is going to happen. I can assure you that any judgment coming from the Federal High Court in, in Abuja is taken very seriously by the Nigerian government. All right. We're going to take interviews of the week right now. And when we come back, we'll go to the northwest and southwest regions of the country. of women in the northwest and southwest who are sleeping in the bushes, who are being killed, who are being raped, who have no way to take care of their children. I think people, when you go to northwest and southwest, you see women in tears because they have sat with children in the bush. 
for two weeks and have had to have cut leaves to give those children to eat. So we have to stand by those women. We cannot only sit and say, oh, what can we do? It's a horrible situation. This is an opportunity to express to those women that we are with you. I want to call on the Cameroonian women and the North and Southwest women who came out in their numbers and mourned at the Bongo Square in Boya. They sat down on their Botox and they wept of what it's going through. Here at the stadium, here, Bamenda women went there and wept. And that, instead of celebrating this day, let the women sit down and weep and mourn for their husbands, for their children who are being killed. Whether these tears will replace the blood that is flowing and Sabia will listen. Celebration is a good thing. Um, and we need to, in society, celebrate women who are not celebrated enough. However, on this particular day, in this particular moment in the life of our nation, we need to protest. We must protest. We must say, no, it's not okay. Not okay that our government lined up two women and a girl and a baby on the back and shot them and then lied to us and said, no, it was not us. Then finally, when they could no longer lie, it was them, but uh, they are carrying out investigation. No justice till today for those women. If, it, if it's only for those two women, that little girl and that baby, we should be in protest. I am really taken aback. I'm surprised and really beaten because I think that at the stage where we are in this country, we should do one thing right and one thing with a little bit of human touch and one thing looking at the local woman. I don't know whether uh, the government of Cameroon has really studied the beginning of the Women's Day, where it started, why it started and how it started to educate people and to bring the local people, get them involved. As we're talking, in Yaoundé, the Anglophone elites, uh, ministers, directors, secretary generals are contributing 1.5 million each to buy women's day uniform to give uh, the, the IDPs in Yaoundé and Wala. And uh, they do not feel for the woman who is in the bush now with a two, three day old baby crying under rains in mosquitoes. They are contributing money to buy material gifts. I thought that women should have taken this day to press for the solutions of what we are going through. I call on the women to have the sympathy of the other women who are being raped every day. In Boya, so they can work cannot more go to school because there's no school, there's no way, there's dots, war everywhere. So I will invite most of the youth to know how the situation is going worse and know through a uh, social network how they can play a role in peacemaking. The youth have a power and with that power they can strongly contribute to building social cohesion in Cameroon. So because we know that most of them they have power but when we look at the social media for example they use it on instead to send messages of hate. For, we want them to use this opportunity, their strong power to rather build peace inside their community. The country has been having so many challenges, security challenges and when we look at these challenges we we see the youth at the center of this. They are they perpetrate act of violence. They are, each time there is a problem, most of the time we find youth inside all the situation. And, um, recently, we all witnessed the resignation of our national chairman, uh, the Honorable Justice Aya Paul Abine. His resignation it has nothing to do within an issue like an internal squabble of the party. He clearly 
uh, said it, politics is not um, a situation where we have to uh, uh, move on people's blood to, to take over leadership. Politics is not a situation where we have to be in a chaotic um, uh, uh, way that uh, uh, we have people arrested, repression, violence everywhere. We have uh, refugees internally displaced. That is not all about politics. His uh, resignation, those of us who were very close to him, did not really take us as a surprise because he earlier told us about his resignation and uh, earlier said we should start looking for someone to, 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 to take over uh, the, the, the leadership of the, of the party. We are striking because of the condition of uh, lecturers at the University of Douala. Because since uh, two years we still negotiate with the administration, but with the little result, they offer us uh, staff room for lecturers, but there is not any chair, there is not light, there is not water. And the strike is also concerning the financial aspect. When we, uh, we used to go to the Yaoundé for the promotion of the lecturers, when we go there we need to stay to hotel and feed ourselves. But we, pay, we, we lecturers used to use our own money without the support of the university. Knowing that for these two aspects, the university have to give a part for just for the transportation or the accommodation. But until now, since two years, we went there without any accommodation coming from the, from the university. We meet uh, the dean uh, of the different, and the head of uh, faculty of the different uh, school. They say that they, they, the administration take 20 million for each school to ameliorate the condition of lecturers, but until now we don't have any amelioration. Just we can just have uh, uh, the faculty of science, have the faculty of economic science, who have a little amelioration. But faculty of letters and faculty of uh, public law, there is not any amelioration. It's lecturers who are trying to. Uh, ameliorate the space they give to them. It's not normal. If we are out today, it is because most of our rights as support staffs are being violated by this present regime. I'm making reference to vice chancellors and rectors of Cameroon State University because we have noticed that any decree, be it presidential decree or prime ministerial decree or any law that accords some certain advantages to support staffs, those laws are being relegated to the background as far as support staffs are concerned. A prime ministerial decree number 2014 slash 2217 slash PM of the 24th of July 2014. This Prime Minister's decree increases the minimum wage that is supposed to be pay, received by any, every worker within the nation to the sum of 36,270 francs. But almost five years later, can you imagine that a support staff that has been recruited on category one, echelon one, still has as basic salary 25,087 francs? It is very deplorable. The strike of my personnel, administrative personnel, uh, we have been dealing about the, the matters. Uh, this matter deals, first of all, with the uh, increase of uh, what is called in French, SMIC. I mean, the basic salary, official basic salary, authorized in our country, which has been raised from 20, 25,000 francs CFA to 36, 500, I think, francs CFA, something like that. Okay, now the personnel are requesting to see application, complete application of this, of so said decree of uh, the, 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 the head of government, prime minister. Okay, so we have done the necessary to uh, upgrade the potential salary which probably might be less than 36,000 francs CFA. So we have dealt with a problem and you have no problem with that anymore today. 
But the second point of claims of my personnel was they, they were not concerned with the reduction of salaries made in 1993 by the government. They are claiming that they should not be included to those to be applied this reduction of salary. I said, okay, I don't know why you pretend that you are not concerned. You have big lorries carrying sand, serving the, the new stadium in construction. That's why you find holes in the way. That a hole, if I enter a hole there, you cannot even see my head. At least we try to fill those gutter, those holes by our human activities every Sunday morning. But it appears that those efforts are not sufficient because rain with all this natural problem, we cannot cope with it. We need more materials. We need the support of government. Many who have their mean, their money, they are fleeing the quarter to go and stay back in the town. I would not say that the, 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 the creepy port functions 100%. This could, could be a lie. But what I can say is that uh, since uh, almost one year, this functioning is upgrading day by day. And we are doing everything to improve the, uh, the competitiveness of this port. Economic operators cannot just run to Kidney without this information. I think it's, more, it's important for us to come and meet them and tell them that Kribi is already functioning and tell them also about the opportunities the Kribi port can give to them. In a recent statement on the prevailing situation in the northwest and southwest regions of the country, the European Union representative Federica Mogherini indicated, I quote, the persistence of violence and human rights violations in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon has resulted in an unacceptable number of casualties and a heavy impact in humanitarian and economic terms. And the Under Secretary of State of the United States of America in charge of African Affairs equally indicated in, in an outing on Radio France International that the Cameroon government was not serious enough in handling this crisis. When you look at these two statements, uh, what can you uh, say about international involvement in the ongoing situation in the Northwest and Southwest regions? We thank God that the international community is now getting involved in this horrible war that Mr. Abia brought on our people. What do I mean by that? The war has been, been, has been fought now for two years, counting, almost three years. It is now the international community is getting up. I want to add that the European Union is also, a, 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 27 members have reacted. And I'm, I, am, I, am, I am saying that the matter is getting serious against this government. If I was advising this government, I would not advise the, the so-called Minister of Communication to issue a communique condemning the, what the, the Undersecretary for African Affairs of the United States of the State Department said. He should have just waited for him to come and they handle it diplomatically. Now he has made it uh, confrontational. So he, the man is supposed to be here on the 17th. This is the first time the international community is reacting positively towards this horrible war that is taking the lives of our people, take, de destroying our villages, destroying our, our fabric. The whole of Northwest now is torn apart. If, it, if I tell you the number of casualties, it is horrible. The villages that have been burned down, and, we and, 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 and the, 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 the military arsenal that the Cameroon government is moving to the Northwest and Southwest as if they are fighting a foreign country, now we now know that they are fighting a foreign country. And, and the statement of the EU representative is in, is in sharp contrast to what we have been hearing some persons, including some authorities who have been telling us that uh, the situation is gradually returning to normalcy, it's under control. It is so a sharp contrast. She says the situation is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. And it has been unacceptable for the last three years. The international community, you know, things grind very slowly, but they are getting there. For the first time, 
these people are now, they are backs to the world because they have been telling everybody lies that the situation is under control. What do they mean by the situation is under control? When children are dying, women are dying, men are dying, civilians, ordinary civilians who have nothing to do with the war are being shot every day by the Cameroon military. They go into the villages, they just shoot at random and kill, the, kill the civilians. Even though the Ministry of Defense has repeatedly said it in uh, statements, um, notably indicating that the military is not there to kill, the military is there to protect the people and the properties, is there to protect the territorial integrity of Cameroon and not to kill and not to destroy properties and so on. Jonathan, we are in a global village. The imageries are there. The atrocities committed by this military is there. For the, 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 the Minister of Defense and the Minister of Communication can say whatever they want to say. But the facts on the ground are there. Look at what happened in Bali. Look at what happened in, in, is happening in Kumbu. Look at what is happening even in, in, in Bamenda town, in, in, in the suburbs of Bamenda town. Look at what is happening in the southwest province. They started in Manfi. You, you saw what happened in Kembong and other places. Kwakwa in, the, in, the, in Kumba, uh, on the Kumba Bonge Road. Look, the imageries are there. All the burnings of both hospitals, schools, and villages are being orchestrated by the military. And, and the, uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to start arguing. The, there will be an investigation, international investigation, and we will see the atrocities that this government and its military has committed on the people of the Northwest and Southwest. And I don't want to call and, them and the Northwest and Southwest because it is getting clear that they will no longer be Northwest and Southwest. And accusing fingers of the Yaoundé administration are pointing to the separatists to have committed this. Listen to me, Joseph. Listen to, to me. Have yes, I understand that. District hospital. Yes. Uh, let me. There still, let me. There are still questions on how um, hospitals or a hospital like the Kumba District Hospital is set ablaze to that extent, uh, despite the military presence and so on. But then the 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 the. Um, the national president or the president of the uh, National Commission on Human Rights and Freedoms in his last statement on this issue highlighted this problem of identifying who did what and he was worried and questioning why. What is the problem that he cannot be identified, those who are committing the crimes cannot be identified and... There is no political will to identify. I want to tell you that I have my analysis is that the military did it. Because I, as a young man at the age of 22, I worked in that hospital. I worked in that hospital. It's a very well constructed British hospital that they left in Kumba. Very well constructed with stones. For that kind of destruction to take place, it has to be professional. This, the uh, uh, restoration forces don't have the capacity to do that. And they cannot shoot themselves in the foot, burn a hospital where most some of them are being treated. That hospital has been treating so, uh, wounded people from both sides. And, and, and what happened is that there was a battle between the army and the restoration forces in Kumba. And some of those boys were wounded. And the military thought that they would be taken to that hospital. So they ran to that hospital and went to the outpatient and asked the doctor and the nurses to produce a list of patients. They said they, they refused to, it's against medical ethics. We will not do that. Secondly, uh, uh, fire brigade. I know Kumba very well, I know, that's clear. Well, the fire brigade is not up to two minutes away from there. And, and as you done in that fire brigade, declared that the military stopped them from intervening in that fire. So who burned the, who, 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 who burn the, burn the hospital? The uh, Yaoundé administration has continued, you know, dismissing those allegations and accusing... Well, they can't be. They are satellite so images. Now, the, the, the U.S. Secretary, Under Secretary for African Affairs said the Cameroon government has, uh, has to take serious measures. What are some of those serious measures that you think the government has to take to solve this crisis? As speakers well, as the only serious measure is that we sit on the negotiating table. 
I don't see any other way of coming out of it. And if they don't want to see the military, that's fair and good for us. When I mean us, I mean the Northwest and South. I'm from the Northwest and, you, and, 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 and Southwest. The part that the thing that, that Mr. Pierre declared war on. We are sitting on the negotiating table. That is a serious measure. That and that is what everybody has been asking for. Because we cannot live under this, under this condition. We don't have villages again. You go to Bali now, it's a, Bali, it's, a, Bali, it's a war zone. You cannot go back to your village right now as I'm talking to you. All right, Barrister Fu Jamsor, Lead Defense Council of the Anglophone Leaders, been detained in the only member of the Cameroon Bar Association. Thanks for coming. For now, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this edition of the Inside. Thanks for staying with us. Goodbye.